Welcome everybody. Just like thank you for coming out this morning. We just wanted to remind everyone that we're still having our Restored Life Recovery every Friday night. It's a 12-step program based on G Jesus Beatitudes. Uh, child care will be provided and we welcome all the adults with any hurt, habit, and hang up. Um, we'd just like to thank everyone that has already came out, but we are encouraging everyone to invite their family, people from the community, and we are really looking forward to having anybody come out that's really looking forward to diving deeper into Christ. Thank you for your time and have a good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you with us today. I hope that you feel like you're, uh, if you're visiting for the first time, you feel comfortable just as part of the worship team. If you have anything that we, you need, please see one of our greeters. Be, let us know that you're here by filling out a visitor's card. We have a special gift just for you. We'd like to thank you for coming. If you have your offering and you were curious about how or why we don't take an offering, we want you to give it. We don't feel like we should take it, but we have an offering box in the back. You can feel free to drop that in the box and you'll get credit for it. Uh, and we just thank you so much. And again, we love you. God bless you. Let's continue to worship the Lord and have a great day. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's welcome him in this place. Father, we come to praise your name, to lift you up. We thank you, Father Lord, that we can praise a risen Savior, a Savior who came to redeem the lost, to save those, Lord, that don't know you, Father. I thank you for your precious blood and for all that you've done. And God, may you inhabit the praises of your people. May we lift up your name, the name of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. For our Redeemer lives. Amen. Amen. He does live in our hearts and in our lives and all around us. Amen. Hallelujah.
love for he is good. Amen. Oh 
Lord, there is none like you. We lift you up. God, we come before you today, and we know that, Lord, right now, whatever we need, whatever we need in this place today, you are more than enough to meet and minister to that need. That you are holy. We put our trust and our faith in you. God, we think and we know, Heavenly Father, in, in our hearts and minds today, that there is none like you. We worship you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise today, amen. Amen. You can be seated if you wish to, amen. Just take a few minutes. I, I, I love that, and I, I, I told Naomi earlier, and I, I, I thank the, the Lord, the song she picks out. I love them. Uh, she was singing that one, and I got to thinking, you know, we're all, we're, I, I said, Lord, I, I, I think about all these heathens that you've given me to pastor. And I thought about that, and that song that she was singing, and she sang that song, Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb, that we are all changed. We're not the same. Not what we used to be. I'm different. There's something different about me. And there should be something different about each of us. Because when we encounter Jesus Christ, we are never the same. We are changed forever and ever. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. And we thank you so much for being with us. We've got a, uh, a lot of things that are on the schedule. Just uh, hope that you got a bulletin. Take time to read it and look at it. Um, keep it. Uh, there's a message on the front of it that it's got, other than putting your name on it, it's for you. Amen. So make sure you look at that today. We're going to get into my message in just a few minutes, but I wanted to say a special, uh, just a special uh, time of prayer. And thank you for um, all those who have acknowledged and some of you that know Dave and Susan LaRosa know that David uh, went on to be with the Lord this past week on Monday. And uh, God called him home, and he is at home uh, to be with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, David had served in many different roles in the church, and he has served on the pastor's council here. He was my help in electrician. He helped me wire some of the plugs and wires and did some things around here. Uh, and Dave had, had retired. I've known him for years. And uh, when we were at Chandler, David always had a sense of humor. He always had something funny to say. And on Monday, being April Fool's Day, he started teasing with Susan about the, uh, his chest hurting. And she thought he was just teasing and said, David, quit teasing with me. About, about 10.30, he came back to her and said, I really am hurting. I, we need to call 911. Emergency unit came out, picked him up, took him to the hospital. They thought he was having a heart attack. Uh, they worked on him from about 10.30 till about 2.30. Uh, then they decided that he didn't have a heart attack, but his heart was failing. And so from 2.30 till about 4.30, 5 o'clock, they tried to resuscitate and work on his heart. At 7.30, the Lord chose to take him home. It, it was, my wife and I were there with the family, and it was a very difficult time for them. And, and I ask you for your prayers for Susan and for the uh, two children, uh, Stephen and Chandria, and then also just pray for the grandkids. Um, I know that God is, is there with them, giving them comfort, but they, they need your prayers. Uh, many have asked me about uh, services. We're not going to be doing a service. Uh, they, wanted to be, they wanted to do something as a privacy with their family uh, and try to bring some, some continuity and conclusion to this with their family. As most of you know, if you've lost a loved one or if you've lost a family member, it's real hard to go on. It's very difficult. And so we need to lift them up in prayer this next week. I appreciate your prayers. Um, and again, uh, let's continue to believe that for them. Happened very quickly. Uh, I was at breakfast with Dave Friday. We were teasing because my dad has been in the hospital. And he said, I don't want to lay in the hospital and just suffer for a long period of time. When I go, I want just God just to take me home. And I tell you what, uh, God knew what he was doing, and, and he, he does some miraculous things. But um, if you have your Bibles, I want to talk this morning, um, and we're going we're gonna to have a time of prayer here at the end of the service this morning, and the Lord's direction continues where I'm going. Um, I hope that I can get to that. 
but I'm finishing my series on hope, and, uh, and, and I, I want to share this with you. Uh, we started this section of Scripture three weeks ago. We started preaching about this out of this same section of Scripture, out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. And I've taken the, this section of Scripture, and I've, the, the Lord has kind of directed me on it. I broke it down a little bit more each time with you. And if you remember the first week, we talked about our salvation uh, and what we have in that verse. We also talked about last week about the resurrection that we have in this verse, talking about our hope in the resurrection. And then today we're going to be talking about our inheritance. And so we're going to be talking about the hope that we have in our inheritance. If you have your Bibles, you turn with me. Willa did a great job putting it up on the screen for us. If you have your Bibles, you can uh, read along with us. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. When we talked about that, we talked about those things that we... You can stay standing up for just a minute. I'm getting ready to pray. It'd be good. It won't hurt you. You can stay standing. I want to I just ask you to pray with me and confirm this, because here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray this prayer with me, that God would open your ears to hear, and not just the ears that you listen with, but the ears of your heart, so that it would change who you are through this message. I want to ask you to pray with me about that this morning. Can you do that? Heavenly Father, as we come before you, I ask you to touch these lips of clay. God, that I would speak the words that you want spoken, and Heavenly Father, I would would allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead and guide in this. And I, w- I would pray that, God, you would let each one that hears today that, that, that open their hearts, that they don't just hear and it, and it goes through their mind, but never transports into their heart. God, I pray that they would listen and it would change who they are. Let this word be effective because I, I believe, Heavenly Father, you have a word for us today. Let it change us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated if you wish to now. Amen. And I just, just thank you so much. I, I want to talk this morning a little bit about our inheritance. How many of you have ever received an inheritance before? Someone's passed away, you've gotten an inheritance, and, and you've received that. Now, the first service, there were several people that had received inheritances, and they raised their hands and everybody like that. If you've never received an inheritance, how many of you have never received an inheritance before? My kids, when they were, we, we started talking about this, and we started talking about, uh, they were wanting to get an inheritance, and they wanted to know, Dad, when are we going to get our inheritance? And I said, well, we can start right now. All you have to do is start paying bills, because when I die, that's what you get. You're inheriting all my bills, so uh, you can, you, that's your inheritance. So here's what I, I, I want to tell you is, is though, here's an, the, the word inheritance is to, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Now we want to think about that because today I'm going to preach this, that this particular point is that God has an inheritance for you. Now most people think and they, most people receive that out of this scripture thinking that we will get that inheritance when we get to heaven because it talks about it reserved in heaven for you but it a lot of times we think that it's only talking about heaven and the hope that we have when we get to heaven but the good thing that I can tell you is is that you can receive part of your inheritance already today and I'm going to tell you how that we know that we can have that inheritance amen I'm going to share this with you so if you have your bible stay with me this morning the definition of inherit to inheritance to an, an inheritance is to give after the reading of the will and appropriated fees are paid. And when we think about the idea of a will, there is a will that is given. Now a will can be called a testament or a covenant or a promise. It is usually done through an attorney and it is set apart and signifies what that one is going to receive. Each one can be given X amount of an of an inheritance. Uh, I was watching a commercial the other day, and it showed a, an inheritance that was given, and the, all the kids that were there were fighting and thinking that they were going to get all of the wealth of their inheritance. That they were going to get this man who was very wealthy. They were going to get all of his inheritance, and come to find out, the inheritance was all left to the cat. All I can tell you is, is that uh, people do crazy things with what they have been given. 
But I want to talk this morning a little bit about our inheritance and what God has left for us. Jesus told his disciples this in Matthew, the the 26th chapter, verses 26 through 29. He was sitting with them before he was taking this, and we call this the the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper, if you will, when he took the bread and the the wine and he broke it. He says this, and he says, "And, and as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said to them, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it for all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And he begins to talk about that and sets this as the standard of this new covenant. You see, the old covenant was through the law and the works of the law. How many of you know that we have two parts of this Bible? It's a New Testament and an Old Testament. Amen? How many of you know that the same God wrote both books? Amen? Inspired by men uh, and moved upon by the Holy Spirit to write the words that we have on this paper. All I can tell you is this. It is a promise. It is a promise. It is a written letter of an inheritance. This message for you is given as an inheritance for you. It is given to say that all of the promises, both in the old and the new, are given for you. Jesus, when he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. Now, most people think that he was talking about his life or or that that he came to do to fulfill. But Jesus Christ, when he said, it is finished, the testament had been fulfilled and the will that he required was done. And everything that we need has been supplied and been given. Now, I'm going to, if you'll allow me just a a liberty this morning just to talk about this, because what you need to understand is Jesus Christ had to die. And without that, we could not receive our inheritance. Someone had to die so that we could receive all the promises that God had for us. There was no way of salvation without the death of Jesus Christ. Now, we, had, we talked last week about the hope that we have because he didn't just die, but he rose again. Amen? Remember that song that we were singing, and I told you to memorize it for next week? You got it memorized? Right, Matthias? Because he lives. Come on, amen? I can face tomorrow. We, we talk about that. Because we know he lives. We, we don't have a dead Savior. We have a resurrected Savior. But Jesus had to die so that we could inherit what God promised for us. And when we look at that, we begin to realize that God was saying to them, when he talked about this, he said, this is the new covenant, the, the juice and the, and the bread that we break and we take. It's the covenant, the promise that God has given to us. He told us that there had to be someone who would issue the will then. Most of the time when we do a will or an inheritance, we take that time and we will have that given and it will be read by an attorney. How many of you know that they take much more than their share? Anyway, never mind. We won't go there. But uh, all of that being said, uh, to, that you have one that's written and it's documented on what is to be given and what is to be placed. This is what the Bible tells us. If you go to Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verses 15 through 17, Paul writes this to, to give us the hope of, of our inheritance. And he says, and for this reason... He is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. If you could stop right there, it would only be about salvation, only the hope of eternal life. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. A testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the tester lives. The mediator would be the attorney. The mediator would be the one that is to read. The mediator is the one who sets it. The tester is the one who is going to be the sacrifice. It's the one who dies. My kids would get an inheritance. My my dad would give an inheritance to me. If the Lord chooses to take him, I think my dad is going to outlive me. I hope so. All I can tell you is is that here's, here's the thing. I don't want to have to have my dad die to get my inheritance. But that's the way it works. That's the way an inheritance works. And Jesus came to fulfill it. He was the tester. He was the one who had to die so that we could receive the promise of both salvation 
and the hope of the resurrection. If you look at that, I want you to look at the, the next part. Go ahead and pull that next one up. What is our inheritance? The first thing that we talked about is, is our salvation. We have the hope of our salvation. We have the hope that, that when we inherit, we, we inherit salvation. If Jesus didn't die, we couldn't come alive. Amen? He had to die. Jesus died for our sins. Amen? And if he didn't die, we could not have a way of salvation. But Jesus did die. Amen? So many people talk about this, and they said, well, what if he just passed out? What if he was just unconscious? What if he, uh, the, and, and he didn't really, uh, no, oh, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus died on the cross. The Roman soldiers that were there that day knew how to make sure that someone was dead, and Jesus died. Amen? You could not come alive if you weren't dead, and that's what gives us the hope of the, then the resurrection. We not only have the hope of salvation, but we have the hope of the resurrection. And we talked about it last week, how that every one of us, should the Lord tarry, we will die. From the, the, from the dust we came, from the dust we will return. It's hard for us to think about that, but all of us, if we live long enough, eventually we will return back to the dust that we came from. Amen? And so when we do that, we acknowledge that. But I'm going to tell you something. Paul said it best, and I shared this with you last week. It's to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And your spirit is going to live with him. Amen? So if this body goes by the grave, praise the Lord. Don't grieve for me. Don't ask me to come back. Amen? I'm in a place where I want to be. Amen? I'm living with my Savior. See, I don't have to wait till the trumpet sounds. I know that we think a lot of times, and that's what Mary thought when she was talking to Jesus, that the resurrection only happened at the end. But I'm going to tell you something. When, because of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, I have the hope of the resurrection. As soon as this body dies, I'm resurrected. Amen? I'm out of here. And, and, and I think about the idea of this hope of the salvation, the hope of the resurrection. Then I see also the hope, but there is more than that that God has given us. There is so much more that God has promised us to our inheritance. Now, my question throughout this message is this. If God has given you his inheritance, because we know that Jesus died, he gave you this inheritance, but what does that inheritance entail? What all did he give us? If you have your Bibles, I want you to just do this with me. Hold it up, put your finger in the marker where you were. If you're, if you're brave enough to hold it up on your phone, hold your phone up. And I want you to realize this. This is my promise. This is my covenant. I believe it. And I receive everything in it. In Jesus' name. Now here's what I want to tell you is this. If you said that and you believe that and you receive that, then whatever you ask, you can believe and receive from Christ. Amen? Amen? If you are his child. Now, don't try to come in and take the inheritance if you're not part of the family. Amen? Right. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ and surrendered your life and made him Lord of your life, then you have no right to his inheritance. If you're sitting there today, you're being skeptical, you're saying, well, I don't know if I want to commit to this. I, I really don't want to abide by all these things, and I don't, I don't want to obey. You know, I just, just want to do my own thing. I hate the way they say, fine. I just want to do my own thing. Well, anyway, here's what I want to tell you is this. You can't do your own thing and submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen? And that, that's why when Naomi was singing that song, I, it just leaped up in me. I am changed. Amen? The Lord, I used to say, I want it my way. I did it the Burger King. I was the first one that I initiated that. Burger King just stole my idea. Because I wanted it my way all the time. And God, when I changed and I surrendered my life, I want it God's way. Amen? Amen. So here's what I want to tell you. Today I'm going to preach about more of the inheritance that we have to receive. Now I can't, I can't preach the whole Bible because that's, that's what this is. This is the covenant promise of God. This is his will to us. And if, if you read this, you can grasp that and begin to say, I, I, I can accept this. Here's what I want you to do. Go with me. And Jesus promises this. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me in John, the third, uh, 14th chapter and verse 3. If you have your Bibles, you, you'll get this. Jesus broke it down into a, a few things. He was, remember, the 14th chapter is when Jesus tells, told his disciples, uh, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And, he said, and then he says, I go to prepare. If I go... How many of you know that Jesus Christ died so he could go? 
Come on, amen. He, he died so he could go. And the Bible says that if I go, I will prepare a place for you. The first thing that you need to understand is that if you've accepted Jesus Christ, he has begun to prepare a place with your name on it that you can have when you get to heaven. Amen? Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. Now that place, it, it's because listen, we, we've all heard some of the some of the old songs. I just uh, I just want a cabin on the backside of heaven, amen. That's not why God's going to prepare for you. There's no slums in heaven. There's no bad area. Come on, how many of you? How many? Of, I know this is this is a true fact, but how many of you are trying to having to, trouble finding a place to live? Come on, amen. Apartments are hard to find, and houses are far, hard to find. I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's hard. But I'm going to tell you something. Wouldn't it be nice if if as soon as you had crossed over from, from the earth to heaven, that you need to realize this, I made plans and I've already got my place up there. Amen. I may not have a perfect place here, but I got a perfect place in heaven. Amen. It'll be everything I need. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's wonderfully created. It's created for me. But not only me, for everyone who believes. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go, I will come again and receive you to myself. So the second thing that we need to realize is it's not only Jesus was saying, I'm going to go and prepare. That's one of the inheritances that we have that, he has, that we can inherit that place that he's prepared for us. But the second thing we need to realize is he said, I have to go so I can come again. How many of you know that you can't go unless you leave? You can't come again unless you leave. Now, this is going to be confusing for you, so hold on, Evan. If Jesus didn't leave, he couldn't come back, right? Because if you don't leave, you can't come back from where you didn't leave from. Are you totally confused? Because I'm really, I was really confused first service when I said that. I thought, what did I just say? And so Jesus had to leave the earth. He had to go and he went to prepare. But he said, if I go, I am coming back that where I am you. Oh, let me tell you something. Everything that Jesus walks and talks and sees, amen, all the things that John got the opportunity to see when he went to, to the island of Patmos and saw all of heaven and all the things that, that are glamorous and glorious about heaven, all that Daniel dreamed about and wrote about, all those things that have been pinned by man's idea and minds of heaven. Let me tell you something. One day, that place that Jesus said, I prepare for you, I will come again, that where I am, there you will be also. We'll get to cross over, amen? We'll get to see all that inheritance that we have, amen? When I look at that, then he said, where I am, uh, and then he said, there you will be also. That nature of that is that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. The hope that we have is that we can receive that. Now, we think about that, and we begin to think that all of that, yes, pastor, is, is eternal. All of that is in heaven. All of that that we receive is after we die. Is there any hope of any promise of an inheritance today? So do I have to do I have to wait till I get to heaven to receive the promises of God? No, because the tester has died. Jesus Christ died so that I could receive the hope. And if you don't, but the Bible tells us, go ahead and pull that next one up. There it says in, in John the 14th chapter, verses 13 and 14, it says, And whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Do you know that is a promise from God? That is a promise. That is an inheritance that you and I can receive. Now, let me ask you some things. Have you ever asked God for something and he didn't give it to you? Have you ever prayed for healing and he didn't give it to you? Have you ever prayed for God to, to help you financially and he didn't do it? Sometimes we struggle with these things and God allows us financially because we don't make very good choices. Come on, amen. Sometimes we're the result of our own bad decisions. And when we ask God for something, we, we sometimes get it and then we complain to God because we got it. Come on. Here's what we need to understand is that when we ask God, we ask God according to his will and his purpose. And sometimes his purpose. When I pray for healing, here's what I tell you. And I'll tell you this. I know that there are people that are in this building that need healing. I know that. Here's what I want to tell you is this. You pray for healing. Without a doubt, Jesus said to ask and believe that you would receive. By his son's stripes we are healed. I am the healed of Jesus Christ. I am, I am the healed of God. Amen. If you are in need of healing, here's what you need to hear is this. 
Sometimes we need to understand that God has two ways of healing. And you need to get this because you understand this. Healing is to accept God's will and way of healing. Sometimes it happens instantly. Sometimes it happens through a process. And sometimes God has a better way. Amen? Now, in healing, God would never say no. But he will tell you that sometimes he has something that he's trying to work out. There may be a purpose. There may be a, a, something that he's trying to work out in you. Maybe there's some things that he needs to deal with in you. Maybe there's some things that he needs to do to witness through you in the midst of what you're going through. Amen. Because if he healed you, sometimes we wouldn't do and testify the way that we do. But when we ask and believe, we can receive. That's a promise. You had inherited, you had inherited that when you asked God and you became a committed servant of Jesus Christ. You can ask what you will, and he said, I will do it. Amen. Because why? We have received our inheritance. Amen. Now, the problem with it is, is that, and here's what we do. We pray for healing. Always pray for healing. When you pray for someone who is sick, you pray for healing. But you got to understand this. God will heal. Sometimes it's in different ways. How many of you know that the greatest healing that God can give you is when he delivers your body from this world? Amen? The greatest healing and the greatest miracle can be the transition from this earth to heaven. Amen? That's a complete healing. That's where there's no more pain nor sorrow. That everything that we've struggled with and every evidence of battle and the flesh that we've ever gone through, that's gone. Amen? And I'm walking in a new body. Amen? Amen. That's the miracle of healing. Now, sometimes when God heals us, he is dealing with us, and, and he's talking with us, sharing with us. I, I know that a lot of people, uh, when, when I pray, and I've taught on prayer a lot, uh, but, but I want to share this with you. In, in prayer, sometimes we've got to understand that God will, will answer you in, in basically four different ways. He will say yes. He will say no. He will say, I have a better way. Come on, amen. Sometimes when he does that, but finally he will say, I will do it, but in my time. Amen. The challenge of our faith is do you believe even after it's gone on? And on and on. I love it when God says yes right away, don't you? Come on, amen. there ain't nothing better than that. Lord, my stomach hurts, heal me. Oh, it's gone. Woo, that makes me feel good, don't it, amen? Uh, but what's really hard is when I come to the Lord and I say, Lord, I'm hurting, I don't feel good. And he says, okay, son, I hear you, but not yet. I'm testing your faith. I don't want to be tested. I say that every time the teacher would give a school assignment, she'd give a test. I, I don't want to take a test. Can't you just take my word? I know it. I would complain about it every time. And usually the teacher found out that I didn't study enough and I wasn't ready to take the test. You know what's really hard for me? Is when God says I have a better way to accept that better way. Because I don't always know what tomorrow will bring. When God chose to take my sister home, it was the hardest thing that I can ever imagine my parents having to go through. But when God spoke to my dad, and my dad was praying in the chapel after my sister had been in the hospital for a long period of time with cirrhosis of the liver. Her liver was just eating up. And he didn't see anything happening. And he said, God, why aren't you healing my sister? Why aren't you healing my daughter? When God prayed that, the Lord spoke to him, and the Lord said, I'll heal her, but I will heal her in my way. Will you accept that? He said, yes, Lord, whatever your will is. And so when she went back up, he went back upstairs to see my sister. It was just a matter of a few hours. God took her home. God just, that, that time of her life on this earth was gone. Did it hurt? Oh, yes. Yes. It, that, that sting still hurts. It, it, it hurts today. When I think about that, when someone you love, if you didn't love them, it wouldn't bother you. But because you love them, you hurt about it. Amen? And because that hurt is there, it just simply means that you love. But on the other side of that is, is that they're in a place, and my sister is in a place where she doesn't have to suffer anymore. She was healed. She was miraculously given that hope of eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
And it's hard for us sometimes to think about that. But when God says no, it's generally for a reason. And I don't like it when God says no. I'm a spoiled brat when it comes to that. Anybody else with me? When I ask God for something and he says no, I get so upset. I never will forget. When we, we were in Indiana, and I, I've told you this story before, but i got to say it again. And we were looking for a church, and we went and looked at a piece of property. Uh, I was t- this young con- this group of people that I had. We went, and we prayed over this piece of property. We did the Jericho march around it. You know, come on, amen. We marched around it. We laid hands on the building. We prayed for it. I went in the day to buy it, and when I walked in to buy it, I put the money. I said, man... We got this money. We, we got the loan approved. We're ready to buy that piece of property. And the real estate agent said, it's sold this morning. It's a cash deal. It's already done. <laughs> I didn't get my way. It didn't. God, you didn't answer the way. I went, you, my God. And I went and I went back to the church. And I walked back and forth across the front of that sanctuary. I knew that when I walked into that congregation on that following Sunday morning, I had to explain God didn't let us have what we wanted. And when I was sitting there and I got to thinking about that, I was, I was, I was literally arguing. I was, God, why? I'm going to be embarrassed. All of this is going to have to happen. And I, I claimed it and I promised it and, and we did everything that we knew to do. And you said to ask, and we did, and we, we, were, we, we, we were all looking forward to it. About six months later, I drove by that, that lot where that property and that church building was. And I drove by, and, and it was kind of strange because when I drove by, there's all these big, heavy construction equipment sitting around digging. They had piles of dirt everywhere. They had piles of dirt all over the place. And I drove in, and I said pulled in and I was curious and there was a guy standing there and I said what is going on and he said well we bought this property we were planning on building the new, a new building we, we had some some things and we found out that there were oil drums that were buried under the property and the seams broke and they leaked into the soil and there are millions of dollars of 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 changes that has to be done to the property and and the the people are having to take all of the soil out and they're going to have to bring new soil in and all of it and God just as, as if his spirit spoke to me and said I told you, when I say no, there's a reason why. When God says no, you got to know God knows why. I don't know. I can't answer that question for you when God says no, but he can. But I love it when God says I have a better way. Because you see, that better way was when that deal didn't go through, and I got done pouting and God spoke to me, it was about three months later that I got called from the overseer here in the state of Arizona and said I, that this church was open and available if I wanted to come and pastor here. You me tell you something? When God says I have a better way, he knows what he's doing. Amen. And you may not understand why. All you have to do is have faith to believe. Amen? Now, I, I didn't mean to get in, in all that, but I can tell you this. When you ask, ask. Because God promised, and that is your inheritance. You are asking God to do something that's not already yours. It's already been given. Jesus Christ has already died. He's already been resurrected. And the promise has already been given, and it's yours. By faith, you receive it. If you ask and believe anything in my name, I will do it. We also realize the fact that not only did Jesus say that he would do the, the works for it, but then also we see a little farther down in John, the 14th chapter, verses 16 and 17. It says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he will abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. You see, the eternal power of the Holy Spirit was waiting for Jesus. Jesus Christ had to leave as the tester. He had to die. He had to go back to heaven so the Holy Spirit could come back down. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have existed eternally. Jesus was there uh, during the creation. The Bible tells us over and over again through Scripture that he was there in the beginning. In the the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. We know that Jesus has existed eternally. We know that the power of the Holy Spirit moved across the face of creation. Amen? 
and across the, the, the breath of God was there. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And now we see, we think a lot of times we think that the Holy Spirit happened to be the creation that happened on the day of Pentecost that all of a sudden he decided to, that, that we, well, we need something else. No, he's eternal. He's eternally existed. And when the promise of the Holy Spirit was given, you see there's a difference. You see the Holy Spirit moved on men in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit is eternal. He moved upon Samson to do the great feats that he did. He moved upon the other, others in the Bible. He, he moved upon Elijah. He moved upon others that, that did great feats. And the power of the Holy Spirit's always moving on the life of the believer. But I'm going to tell you something. Something happened in the New Testament and the new inheritance that we have. That he not, not only will he move on you, but let me tell you something. He wants to live in you. Amen? He, the Holy Spirit said that he not only came to abide with you and to be around you, but he came to live in you. You ask a little kid, ask one of the children, do you know that Jesus Christ, where he lives? They'll point to their heart. He lives in my heart. Amen? And if Jesus Christ, we know that Jesus Christ comes in. Here's one of the things that you have to realize. That's why we can quote that scripture uh, that Paul wrote in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. When we pray that prayer, it's not only the power that we have, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit that burns within us. Amen. That gives us the ability to do what we cannot do in ourselves. When you're facing a challenge, when you're facing a, a, a question of your faith, and you're facing a problem or a circumstance, one of the things you have to know is the power of the Holy Spirit moving in you gives you the ability to accomplish what you cannot do in your own. And we will spend hours and hours and hours fretting and worrying when all we have to do is realize the power of God in me can do what I need to do to accomplish the task that's before me. Amen. When I looked at that, I began to think about all the power of God and, and the things that God has called me to do. That's why the, the Jesus said that greater works than these shall you do. And we think about it. Jesus did the miraculous. He wasn't talking about the quality of the miracle. And a lot of times we think that we're going to do something bigger than raising the dead. No, he just said that in every believer who believes has the power to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. We can pray and the commissioned power of God and the same work that Christ did when he walked this earth, that same power moves in us as believers. That's why greater works than these. So the quality is not better, but the quantity is much better. That every believer is given the ability to do what he could not do in himself. You see, if we sit here and let ourselves listen to our, our own complaints and our own complaints would be, I can't do it. That would be our, that would be our way. I, I can't do this. I just can't. But we're not, I can't people. I know Nike tried to steal this. But I can do. Now, I, I tell you what. I looked at that, those Nike shoes kind of reminded me of that symbol where Micah Jordan jumps up and he slam dunks it. And, you know, with my, with my ability to leap and jump, I will never be like Mike. I will never slam dunk. But now wait, I have pictures to prove that I did. When I was younger, it was a seven foot rim. It was on a playground, and I was jumping, and I jumped, and we took pictures. You know, if you take pictures at the right angle, it looks like you're skying over the top of a 10-foot rim. <laughs> Sometimes what you have to realize is, is God's not going to put you in a position that you can't do something. We'll tell ourselves we can't because we have this excuse and this. I remember when God first called me to preach. When God first put it in my heart to preach, I had every excuse you could think of. I had dyslexia. I had, I had excuses of, uh, I don't read well. I don't like to be in front of people. I blah, blah, blah. I was on and on and on. And every excuse that I could make, God said, okay, we can take care of that. We can take care of that. All, of, all I'm telling you is this. When you receive the inheritance of God, you have everything you need. 
to do what God has called you to do. Now, I want to finish with this last slide, and I'm going to ask Naomi and the musicians to come. Here's what I want you to do is this. I want you to think about your inheritance that God has given you. I'm not going to preach the whole Bible. I could, could go on and on about every promise that's there. But all you have to do is realize that it is yours. It is given to you. On the front page of your bulletin is a little letter. If you have a bulletin, hold it up, look at it, and read what that says. What did that say? Do you know that other than the fact is, here's what it's, it should say is this is for Nate. Nate, gone to dad's. Ramon, gone to dad's. Be back soon. They're an inheritance that God has given to each of us. When God gives us a promise, he holds to that promise. When you believe, God can, we can receive. Amen? And whatever you're asking God for today, listen, here's what I want to do in closing is this. I told Naomi when she picked that song, I don't know what made her pick that song or how she came to that conclusion. But there are two things that must happen for you to be committed to Christ. Number one is you have to confess. And number two is you have to believe. Believe that he is Lord of your life. Now, the demons in hell believe that, that Christ is who he said he was. But you have to be able to believe that, and you have to understand the fact is the power of God. It's not only a confession uh, of, of who he is, but you have to confess him as your own Lord. Amen. And the only way that you can do that is surrender by, to him by your will. Amen. Now, if you are coming today, and you have believed, and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you have every right to every promise that is given and there is a liar and the father of lies that will come to you and he will cause that and he will bring those lies again and again that you can't receive it and that you can't do it he'll put you in a place to say ah oh, you'll never amount to anything it'll never happen you just you're just running over these ruins and and you're you, you'll never you'll never make it you'll never see it it'll never come I'm gonna tell you something I am changed. I'm not the same. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You see, the difference is, is when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you can never be the same. I don't want to be what I used to be. Come on, amen? When I look at that, there's a problem with it because when we accept Jesus Christ, he doesn't save us so we can stay the same. He saves us so we can be changed. And he'll bring us through things that will make us change. He'll bring us through, he'll allow us to go through trials and troubles and problems. He'll bring us to places where he'll bring that change. So that when others see us, they see Christ. They don't see the man that I used to be. They see who I am in Christ now. Because I'm changed. I'm no longer the same. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Stand with me all across this place. I went down to the crimson river, left my burdens on the shore. I went down a sin and came up a saint. Died with Christ, now I'm reborn. Yes, He was. Set free.
Can you bring that back up, Willa? That last slide on my sermon? She probably brought it up and now she's... There it is. The tester has died. The mediator has issued your inheritance. What will you do with it? What will you do with what he has given to you? If every promise that he said is yours, what will you do with it? Now, before I do anything else, she's going to sing this second verse. But before I say anything, before I do anything else, before I take any minute before this, I have to ask you this question. In order to receive the inheritance, you have to have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So with your heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around, that first verse she sang, she was singing that song and it was changed. I have changed. Right now with your heads bowed and eyes closed, if you know right now you've accepted Jesus Christ and you have every right as a child to receive the inheritance, but if there's anything in you that separates you from the love of God, you need to lay it down, you need to let it go, you need to put your hands up and your hearts up and begin to say, Lord, I want to receive my inheritance. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to receive that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to be a child of God. I want to change. I, I'm willing to, to, to do that today, God. If that's you today, I just want you to lift your hands up and I want you to begin to say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me. I surrender everything that I have done by the blood of Jesus Christ I ask you to forgive me Heavenly Father I surrender all that I am to you now God I, I willingly accept the changes that I must make to be your child to receive this promise of this inheritance that you give me Lord I receive it now in Jesus name amen and amen Amen. Now, Naomi's going to sing the second verse. And if that's you and you've been changed, then what you need to do is celebrate the second song, the second part of this verse. Because here's what's going to happen. We're going to have just a few minutes, and then God's going to use us to do something with what that will that we've received. Amen? You've got an inheritance. We're going to ask you to use. What, what are you doing with it? Come on, amen? Come on. Let's, let's sing it. Now I have a living water. right now and you know it you need a miracle from God and you know it right now just lift your hand up right now there are believers that are going to stand with you right now I'll do my best to pray for as many as I can but at the next few minutes what you need to understand is this you have an inheritance to receive everything that God has promised to you what I read in the scriptures are for you today you need God to do a miracle physically spiritually emotionally mentally it's now and when somebody's standing by you and you see that hand go up they need a miracle I want you just to begin to pray for them put your hand on them touch them and have faith to believe you are we are going to see God do miracles in the next few minutes and I believe it because God because God said it and that's enough for me amen so right now in the next few minutes we're just gonna take it and Naomi's gonna sing that song and as she sings that song I want you to join with me and I want you to believe for your healing right now in the next few minutes God right now 
right now heavenly father i receive it now in jesus name i receive it right now in jesus name i receive it right now yes lord yes lord yes lord heavenly father touch it
this is scripture that Naomi's been singing about when she was singing that song a few minutes ago Revelation the 12th chapter the Bible says in verse 11 and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death what I can tell you is this we overcome by the blood of the lamb Jesus died so that we could have whatever we need. Believe that today, right now. Before we leave, before I dismiss, I'm going to ask you to do something. Reach over, take somebody by the hand. Everybody, get somebody and hold somebody's hand. That last slide that I had was simply this. If you are a child of God, and you have received that inheritance, then what are you doing with your inheritance? What are you doing with what Jesus died for? Let's bow our heads. Let's pray one for another. Heavenly Father, right now, you have commissioned an army to go forth to represent in this world a changed lives for Jesus Christ. I refuse to let the enemy steal my testimony because your word says that I overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am changed. I am not the same. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be. I'm changed. Lord, right now, I ask your Holy Spirit to leap on the life of those who struggle. Give them the power of the presence to hope again, to hope in the power to be delivered, to be changed, to be transformed. God, right now, we believe you for it, and we testify of it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Let's amen. sing, let's sing to you. Let's leave this place in this purpose. What will you do with your inheritance? Take it, be a blessing to someone, testify of the goodness and the greatness of our God. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody's neck. Tell them you love them in the Lord today.